Cutlass Key's lore. Wind's Diary. Backstabbers. A page from Wind's Diary. Old Iron Toe has really got us into something this time. Why did he think this was going to be such a good idea? We do not trust those backstabbers. How many times are we going to let them play us for fools? Win. Stranded. A page from Win's diary. They struck as soon as the parlay had finished. The lying cowards, and now this godforsaken storm has doomed us all. We've salvaged as much as we could from the wreckage, but there's no sign of the others. Hopefully, the seas have claimed them for good. Win. Routines of life. A page from Win's diary. It's bizarre how life, even in this place, can become so routine. Now that the bulk of construction is complete, the captain has lost a bit of his edge. Turns out this place may end up being what was promised after all, despite the struggle of the last few years. Win. The Stranger. Page from Win's diary. I don't trust that stranger, no matter what Iron Doe says. Where did it come from? How long has he been watching us? Why is it he only shows up after we've completed all the difficult work of the building this place? Something is not right. He stinks of death. A familiar face, a page from Wind's diary. I may have been wrong. Edward is not what I feared. His knowledge of this place has helped us avoid many potential catastrophes. But I still can't shake the feeling that I may have met him somewhere before. And I was not wrong about his stench. Hope Lives. Page from Wind's Diary. Old Iron Toes has fallen gravely ill. Edward's tending to his needs, but I don't hold out hope that he'll last the week. I've seen this before with my own father. But the way Edward speaks, he instills hope, even in the dying. Win. Touched coin. Bad luck. Rumors. Note from Sailing Master Trost. Taking this coin was a terrible idea. We've had nothing but bad luck ever since it came aboard our ship. First, we had a month with no merchant ships crossing our paths. Then, we lost our captain to a storm that came out of nowhere. And now, the Vernal's bounty has crashed into this place. If only... We'd never seen the touched coin. Worse luck. Rumors. Note from Boatswain Gibbons. Tross keeps muttering on about that stupid coin. I, for one, don't put much stock in superstition. But maybe he's onto something. There is something wrong with the crew. They are forgetting themselves. I think it's this place. But Tross is convinced it's the coin. He said he was going to do something about it. Lost and found. Rumors. Notes from Gunner Marlow. That blasted coin keeps reappearing. Truss swears he threw it into the bay, but it's back. Thought someone's playing a prank on the poor fellow. Following him or driven the coin when he isn't looking, that sort of thing. Except today I was walking along the beach and saw it myself. There is something wrong about that shiny piece of metal. Make no mistake. Rising tempers. Rumors. Notes from Boat Swain Gibbons. A fight broke out over the coin this morning. Trost wasn't involved, which surprised me, but then I realized he was gone. I searched his quarters and found a note, something about leaving this cursed place. I think maybe he has the right idea. Unbound at last. Rumors. Notes from Gunnar Marlow. Rumors of the coin seem to be spreading. Another group of pirates came to take it from us. We didn't stand a chance. Okay, it's a big brute of a fellow. That one enjoyed doling out pain. Benjamin, I think, was his name. Remember he used to sail on the fair weather friend? He took the coin and sat out across the water. Good riddance, I say. Maybe we can finally get some peace. The Stone Skull Charter. Article 1. Hear ye, hear ye. By order held of the Skull Worm Court, abided by the Thalassocratic Captain in command, enforced by the Dispenser of Justice, let it be known, the Stolen Skull Charter hereby is decreed Code of Law. 
One, cruel and unjust treatment shall be punished. Crew or captain, all those against whom worthy complaint was made, shall be executed. Any honest fellow that never abused any seller shall be freed. Two, plunder and loot shall be divided equally amongst those judged honest and fair. Three, authority of the captain in command only be challenged by a common cause. Delivered and judged by a court of elected officers. Four. All those who seek to join the crew shall be given the opportunity to do so at their peril and the judgment of the captain in command. The, di the dispenser of justice shall be an elected official appointed by the captain in command and whose duties be the fair and swift distribution of justice. Any and all those who oppose the code of law are as flotsam on the sand, and their souls shall be scattered midst the four corners of Eternum. So be it. As decreed and duly signed, Goldstein the Equalizer, Captain in Command. Purzel's Fishing Follies. Mittens Update. Tangled Lines. Perhaps Warwick may have had a point about rigorous storage cleanliness. Today I went to the settlement to get another pole from storage, only to find it had tangled itself up with a spear. It took hours to untie, being that fishing line was precious and I didn't want to cut it free. Missed the perfect golden hour for fishing. So the day's wasted now. What a mess. Perchel. Competition. Favorite spot stolen. I remember my mother had a chair in our old home that no one else was allowed to sit in. She never explicitly told us this, but it was understood that mother's chair was a sacred place. So I feel about my spot, my secret fishing spot here in Eternal. None are to disturb me there. When I walked out of the spot with my gear last night, though, I saw a man fishing there I'd never seen before. We got into a row about whose spot it was, and thanks to the rapier I have on me, I won that one. Saw him again the other day in the settlement, grumbling about dying. Serves him right. Perchel. Scales and scars. Glowing new fish. I saw something the other day that no one will believe. It's beginning to drive me mad. I thought at first someone was trying to steal my fishing spot again, but upon closer inspection, this someone wriggled off into the water with a screech. He's using a tool to get chunks of loose earth from my spot. I know it to be true. I'll see you again, glowing new fish. And next time, you'll be mine. Virtual. Swamp Beast Cookbook. Sea Dog Brewer. Beverages and Brews. Recipe for the Sea Dog Brew. Good for any time you need to find your sea legs. Tequila. Juice of two limes. Dash of clam juice. Garnish with salty marsh fibers. Bitter Squall. Beverages and brews, recipe for better squall. It's the dregs that'll get you. Barrel aids gin, grapefruit bitters, ground zadori root, splash of salt water. Storm surge surprise. Beverages and brews, recipe for storm surge surprise. A pleasant surprise from the first sip. Spiced rum, juice cranberries, juice of one orange, one pureed sugar beet. Cutlass quiche. Sure to start a fight over who cuts the last piece. Four turkey eggs, heavy cream, brine cheese, crab meat, leeks, fatty bacon. Disaster stew. For when your ingredients are scarce and company is scarcer. Salt water, chopped onion, potatoes or turnips, half a head of cabbage, diced sausages, and a mess of kidney beans. Brined biscuits. These biscuits will last years with no signs of mold. Salt water, wheat flour, anise seeds. Sailor's Delight. The red sauce is sure to add flavor to anything. Fermented anchovies, fermented oysters, pepper, mace, salt.